Hi, I'm Jim Peterson, Chairman and CEO of Valor Metals Corp. We're a company traded on the Toronto Venture Exchange. Market cap is roughly 50 million Canadian, ticker symbol VO. We have two assets, a uranium asset in Canada, a palladium platinum asset in Brazil. And we're here to talk about the near term and mid term future of the company. Jim Peterson, welcome to London. How are you? First time we've met live. Yeah. It's crazy, is. right? Let's do that again. I know, it's a good, do, do it like a man, yeah, exactly. give it a go. Um, right, okay, we're, we're here at the conference, Minds and Money, uh, you're, 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 I don't know, it's too much. You know? For, you prefer it online. Yeah, um, it was better here, I didn't have to touch them. Here to meet investors. Um, what's that, how's it going over there? Who are you needing? What are oh, you hoping to get out of it? Minds and Money uh, it was great. We had a great booth, uh, the Discover Group companies, we're there represented, we're in the perfect position, we all had pitch battles or speeches, oh, yeah. lots of meetings and uh, lots of mix, it was good. It's good, the pitch battles are fun, right? They are. Three, you know, three minutes, raw. do it, yeah. sell to me. We're gonna do, we're gonna do a slightly uh, elongated pitch battle today. Okay. And, and you'll probably win this time, because there's only you. There's who, only one competitor. I know, right? Yeah. Um, be awful if you finish second. Uh, so, right, we're gonna start with the Discovery Group. Yeah. Uh, explain that, because I'm kind of a big fan of Discovery Group, yeah. bunch of good, good companies, the track record's not too shabby yeah. either, so tell us a little bit about that. Discover Group is a brand, it's mm -hmm. an alliance, it's a platform, it's almost like an incubator, a private and public companies that are focused on mineral exploration. And I think the big thing about it is our track record, which has attracted really great people. It's enabled us to retain really good people within the group, which attracts good projects. A lot, the people allow us to vet the projects. And we had conversations earlier about just hearing lots of projects and pitches and you have to discern the good, the good from the bad. So the good people picking the great projects attract the capital and the capital allows those people to execute on their business plan or their exploration plan. Yeah. So we've had some big successes in the last six years. Uh, Kamenak was a big one, but actually in this year we had almost 2 billion in exits. So Great Bear yeah. and Great Bear Royalties all happened this year. Yeah. Northern Empire was a few years ago and Kamenak a, a couple of years before that. Success, great success. Yes, yeah. and then relevant success. You, you've talked to Brandon McDonald just this morning. Rock star, bell of the yeah. ball of Mines yeah. and Money, and he announced a big deal. Or Fireweed announced a big deal with the Lundins, and that created a lot of extra demand as well. And that financing, you were able to upsize it. The stock price performed really well based on it. And now they'll be able to execute a really big exploration program and do what they had not been able to do previously. Right, and this, this comes back to the conversations we've had before about you back the teams, right? The, 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 yeah. the teams are super important because they make the decisions here. So I'm not, 100%. Sure, not a chartist. I don't do that. I believe in people mm -hmm. and decisions that they make. So you've, the, the track record of success is good. You know, successful exit, successful share appreciation, mm -hmm. always good. Mm -hmm. We're here to talk today about Valor. So we've got to get diving in there. You talked about two projects. So give us a bit more detail on each of those. Yeah, okay. So Valor holds the Angolac property, which is a uranium project in northern Canada. It has a resource, 43 million pounds at 0.69% U308, which is important because A, on in terms of Canadian listed companies that are independent, that are non-producers, there are only six that have resources, or one of those six. The grade's important because Athabasca is the crown jewel of the world, but a lot of the production that happens for uranium outside of the Athabasca, and this particular property is the highest grade uranium project, over 20 million pounds outside of the Athabasca. So the grades aren't 50%, but the grades are significantly higher than the global average. And uh, the big thing is there's growth potential. We, in the area around this resource, we've made 10 different drilling discoveries. We haven't drilled it off to delineate a, a inferred resource to that kind of density, but um, we have some news flow coming from three of those 10, we, which we worked on this year. Okay, we, we better talk PGE first down in Brazil, and then I wanna come, come back to strategy. Because again, something that you've been threatening to tell me all about, so you've gotta make some plans, you gotta make some decisions, you've gotta finance it, and you've gotta give people hope for, for you know, blue sky growth in uh, Valor. Yeah, so we also have a palladium platinum project in Brazil. That's called Pedro Branca, it's in northeastern Brazil. And that particular project also has a resource. It's palladium, about 60% palladium and 40% platinum, a little over 2.2 million ounces and a little over a gram, but it's actually at surface. So there's, in, in general, there's a very low strip to no strip in all these zones of mineralization. 
we have, uh, again, a big discovery pipeline that's very full, 85 kilometers of strike of this big unit. And we have a methodology now that allows us to move in very rapidly and identify mineralization at, mm -hmm. at, at or near surface. Mm -hmm. So we're really focused on growing that through that. Through that tech. It's basically auger drilling and trenching and setting, setting us up for drilling to add to those resources. Right, okay. So let's talk about you know, lessons learned from previous successes though, okay? Because, you know, when we first started talking, it was, it was PGEs and Anglac was somewhere in the background. We knew it was there, lots of money spent mm -hmm. on it yeah. previously. Uranium market not quite there. Now it's kind of there's been a resurgent movement in, in spot price. We've gone from just under 30 to just over 50. That's a big move, but the equities are still not there because mm -hmm. the market hasn't quite got to the point where um, it's the price incentive is there for companies to come back online. So, how do you play the PGE market, which not too many people, certainly retail, understand mm -hmm. or know how to value? and will require a decent sized balance sheet because it's a big big opportunity ahead of you. You've got uranium there, which I think most uranium companies follow the same pattern. If you look at the charts, if I overlaid all the charts, it pretty much be the same thing, but you've got to get on up, you've got to get to the table. Yeah. That. You're not there yet, so when yeah. is that going to happen? Well, we were previously at the table. Yeah. And we, and we took a big hiatus, so we'll get back to that table again. Okay. And I think the strategy to get, to get back to the table is to separate these assets. Okay. So, so we undertook a review and are still in that process with Canaccord. And we went out and pulled the marketplace in terms of the uranium companies in the, in the universe, m more specifically North America and Australia. Not right. a lot. We weren't talking to UK listed companies very much, but so that universe. And on the palladium side, we went out to um, mid-tier producers, precious metals producers, and of course the palladium and platinum guys, mm -hmm. the, the larger producers. We talked to all those groups and, and, and kind of received feedback on what might be interesting mm -hmm. and most accredited to our shareholders. And as you know, I'm a big shareholder. I'm not incentivized by some sort of M&A transaction that is a golden parachute. I'm incentivized from doing something that makes sense for shareholders. It may not be um, something that makes sense for shareholders with a big buyout, mm -hmm. but what is the best path to add value to the individual projects? Obviously, that's separate, separately. And so within 30 days, I anticipate that we'll be able to give some color on the path for the two projects to, right. to create the two separate entities to best maximize, which we can talk about further. How do we take advantage of a market that's not quite there yet with the mm -hmm. uranium equities, but we believe is coming? And how, how do we have enough scale, interest and sustainability to be uh, a relevant player in that game? Right. And on the palladium side, how do we quickly fund that and have a real clear path to adding lots of ounces and nailing down a PEA, an increased resource base PEA, wrapping economics around it and making that an attractive project perhaps for a takeout or continued development. Right, it's all, okay, uranium first. Um, that's all gonna be down to timing and valuation, right? Because there's also new entrants coming in the marketplace, perhaps a lot, a lot more white noise. And mm -hmm. that's, that's problematic. It's kind of good because it suggests this sentiment is there, but, you're going to have to stand out from a bunch of, bunch of new entrants in the marketplace. What you do have, high grade, you do have pounds on the ground and like a lot of money spent today. So the valuation is going to be super, super interesting to me mm. when you and Canaccord would decide what that could be. One presumes you're going to be North American listed if it is spun out. Is that true? As it currently stands, of course, we're TSX venture listed and it makes quite a bit of sense to actually spin out the Sure yeah. yeah, the the valor will remain listed. Oh, you said so you mean, yeah. uh, yes. Okay, so that's a change. No, it's not because no? I was always I was always thinking that we were hindered because we'd raise flow through money, and yeah. in Canada, when you raise flow through money, the dollars must be spent by that company on that project. Okay. So now that we don't have those flow through dollars anymore, we have more flexibility. Um, the interest level is actually pretty interesting because there is some international interest. But I think the strongest interest is amongst Canadian listed companies. Okay. And so um, they would probably have synergies in uh, shareholder bases okay. and then methods of uh, financing as well. Okay. So you're going to be a uranium company. We're going to be a uranium company and a Brazilian palladium separately. Right. But TSX would be yeah. probably as well. Perhaps. I mean, I think. Same management team? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. I think. You, know, you get some people who know what they're doing. Yeah. I mean, finally. It's only been 12 years. 
I can't get fired no matter how hard I try. You're, you're, it, Don't show up to work. And they very, just keep me around. It's very niche. It is, it is quite niche, right? You know, so fi finding it is one thing, but actually working out how do you kind of navigate that marketplace because it probably will require a, ch a chunk of change coming in somehow. And there's some big players might be interested in PGAs. One hundred percent. And I think, know? and really, we haven't tapped the Brazilian market even in an iota. And actually, I do know that there's serious horsepower in Brazil right now. Mm. Um, they have some huge, huge investor interest in mining and metals. And being a venture listed company with a uranium project in it yeah. actually completely repels them. They don't right. even know what the heck the, the company is. So I think that you know that will be part of the strategy, the financing strategy, the ownership mm. strategy. Would be how do we make sure we have as much support locally by bringing investors there as possible? That could be a Bovespa list, Bovespa listing. Um, it really just depends on the money. So do you think, do you think there's some uh, talk opportunity or re-rate opportunity if you do, one, sort of clarify that position and do it, but two, have people focus and go, because oh, it's a case of Valor, what is Valor? Mm -hmm. I'm not is it quite fish? sure. Or right? is it foul? I know. So you will be clearly signposted as uranium. And, a, and a really good one. One of the this, this six on the adventure that as the, the resource base. Right. You know, and you know, we will move up that list. We, you know, I think what's really missing is if we have, we have no competition because it's none of it. None of it provides a discount because it's not Athabasca. Mm. But the fact that we have no competition means we've staked a massive land package around the unconformity. We have uranium from one side to the other. Mm. So we're unlike others in that we have the resource, mm. but we're not constrained by mineral tank. We have massive upside in the collected samples that suggest the entire base and margin is mineralized with uranium. Okay. So that, that will provide upside too. Once people know where uranium, the resource and upside will be back in okay. your good books and others. About time. I think that that'll be great when, when that happens. I'd love to have you back on to a more technical sure. uh, analysis of that for sure. Um, just because you aren't outside the Athabasca Basin, so you can't help but look back, back to Athabasca Basin and go, well, licensing takes a little bit longer, but there's super high grades in there. There's a lot of them, um, but the, the, the kind of process take, is going to take time for them to become relevant producers or relevant internationally. But they, what, the, what they do have is valuations are insane. Yeah. Right? I think a bit of back, backfilling required, but at, at, at some point it'll get over the line. For you guys, how do you intend to play the market given M&As, roll-ups, new entrants, you're outside the Athabasca base, you're not quite at the party, but you've got the pounds, you've got, the, you've got a good, 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 good grades internationally. Yeah. Um, how, do you, how do you play that? How do we get that step change in valuation? Are you talking about the decisions with respect to M&A? No, no, no. I'm, talk I'm talking about how, how do you get recognized for what you've got in the context of Canada is not the easiest place to do business. You've mm. got kind of First Nations issues, you've got last, well, hopefully ESG issues are... are, are, are. So I, I think ESG, ESG has Why don't evolved. You finish your thought? Well, my, well, my thought is this. I think, I think ESG was getting front and center yeah. attention, lots of conversation, it was a phrase. And I think I think the color, the sheen, the shine has come off of ESG, and it's going back to well, let's be responsible miners for for sure. Um, and I think lots of lots of funds are now being stripped of their ESG branding as a result. So I hope there's a normal conversation about how do Canadian uranium companies get funded, and what's the expectation from the funders in t around you know permitting and, and licensing and mm -hmm. permission to do business, um, whether that be through you know you know, local support or whatever, whatever else you need to do. So has, short, short question, what's it like doing business in, in the Nunavut area? <laughs> it's great. Right. You know, I think, first of all, there's a very concentrated and small hamlets and villages. There's a mm. concentrated population. So if you want to, if it works for timing, you can talk to everybody. You can communicate with every single person. Mm -hmm. So if you are willing to put in the hard yards, you can talk to them all. And what we've done is we've actually selectively brought elders from the different hamlets yeah. to the site. Uh -huh. Because if you aren't really paying attention, you don't really know what's going on. You may have heard from somebody else. But if you've been there yourself, you realize that we're actually not an operating uranium mine or an exploration camp at this stage. And you know it is over 200 kilometers away from some of these villages. So they, when they go there, they have a greater understanding. They understand the importance we place mm. on our environmental stewardship. 
and we try to hire as much as we can in the communities based upon our budgets and how big our programs are. Sometimes in years past, we'd only be up for 30 days, so it doesn't yeah. mean we're going to hire people for two years. But you know, as we grow these programs, we can bring people in and bring up their capacity and, and get them involved. So I think that that part of it is great. And frankly, there's many other places outside of Nunavut where it's totally complicated. You don't know who you're dealing with. Mm. In Nunavut, you know exactly who you're dealing with. You're, you're dealing with the NTI or the Inuit mm. that live there. There's no, there's no confusion over who you have to live with. Yeah. And like, it sounds like a soft and fluffy question, but it's not. If you look at what happened to Baseload about 18 months ago, they didn't necessarily handle it the right way and the, the project now on hold as a result. So it does have a massive impact. And that's, so it is quite a, a, a tough question. It's quite an interesting question to solve. Um, and you've got to go through that process. Well, imagine if you thought you were doing the right thing mm. and then somebody came out of nowhere you'd never even heard of before and mm. told you publicly mm that in fact you were talking to the wrong person and you hadn't talked to them and then now they were very mad at you yeah. and they refused to agree with you because you ignored them. Mm. That would be confusing, wouldn't it? Right. And that doesn't happen in none of it. Good. Back to timing, back to strategy. Okay, so are we saying in January there will be an announcement, some kind of vision? There'll be clarity, there'll be clarity for the two paths, yeah. Right, okay. And then there's a process to yeah. the spin out. Would you be starting that straight away or will you be giving a timing on when you would start that process? Well, it really depends upon the structure. If if it was a, <clears throat> a full-fledged spin-out, mm. that would be a longer process than a sale for shares yeah. in a new vehicle that could be distributed to shareholders because that may or may not require shareholder approval. Yeah. So depending upon the approval process yeah. necessary, that would dictate timing. Okay. So, you know, I'm cognizant that if, if it's not in your hands, then it's not done yet. So the longer the process takes, if there is some sort of spin out, um, actually that I think lessens the potential value. So we want something to be efficient yeah. and quick and allow the shareholders to understand tangibly what kind of value was uh, demonstrated for them right. for their own you, account. Yeah, you, you, what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to get to for, for shareholders, you know, mate, you come on, it's long, the kind of long suffering shareholders because there's been a crappy market for mm. the last yeah. while, right? Um, if I look at a Woolbridge, who spun their nickel asset out to, with mm. Archer and then the capital guys, you've got an asset value at zero on the books, suddenly worth 50 to 60 million bucks. Mm -hmm. That was a real moment. That was a good decision. It was great timing. And nickel market, nickel price is doing their thing as well. It kind of mm -hmm. helps. For you guys, again, the, the timing is, is important, mm -hmm. but also signaling to current shareholders, there's a moment coming. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I've really I've been unable to, to give a definite timing because, you know, it's all well and good to say, you know, this process will be done in two months. Mm. But if you're trying to sell a bunch of people and multiple content, con, uh, continents, yeah. On, on a concept, they'll move at their own pace. Yeah. So there could be the perfect buyer who just happens to head the head in their ass at that time and they're not ready to, to do a deal. So if you rush the process and eliminate that buyer because you've told people a specific timeline. I don't think it's been a quick uh, process, but I think it's been one where we've talked to a bunch of people and we really understand some pretty good paths mm. to take. And so once those are nailed down, we haven't signed deals yet. That means that once those deals are signed, we can announce that it's going to be clear on the path. Okay. Your favorite question, how's money? Uh, it's not good. Okay. It's less than a million dollars. Right. But what we've done is we've done all the expiration, all we're waiting for results, okay. and the same thing in Brazil. So I've been holding off for two reasons. One is the stage of the process, because I think it could affect the capital needs we need. Um, but also, we've got some news flow. So we won't, ha we won't be able to wait long, but when we do... Um, I think it'll be a clear financing strategy for both projects. Okay, look forward to that. Stay in touch.